50 k's northeast of Raymouth. That's fantastic. Welcome to Toyota Grassroots Rugby. Today at Casquare in Hokitika, the West Coast rugby season comes to an end here this afternoon for the Taylor Ball Walls End Trophy up for grabs. With the top team here, the top qualifier, Kiwi, getting the advantage of the home ground here today and history being made here today. It's the first um, time the Taylor Wars End Cup has been fought outside Greymouth here today. They hosted here today by qualifying top. Their opponent here is the boys from up the Grey Valley here, the Ekamatua side. They've played well all season and deserve their place here in the final. They've got to travel down here this afternoon for this game, but I'm sure they'll be up for it in the ground here this afternoon. is a magnificent order here. The groundsman done a marvellous job here today. The scene is set. Tremendous backing here in the background with the Southern Alps. You couldn't have got a better place for a rugby final here this afternoon than Cass Square and Hokitika. Both these sides, I expect, to have a massive crowd following here this afternoon. You can see the signs coming in and out of Greymouth and Hokitika for their respective sides here this afternoon. I'm expecting a buster of a game here this afternoon, and we'll catch up with you later for the result. How have the boys uh, prepared during the week, Danny? Yeah, no, the boys have uh, prepared really, uh, really well. Few, few guys out injured that would have come in handy, but uh, all the guys that are fit are uh, ready to go. Um, the hometown support and the home ground, um, the boys will be taking that on board, no doubt? Yeah, sure, definitely. Uh, one, one of the goals at the start of the year was when we found out that a uh, top qualifier would have home ground advantage and it wouldn't be in Greymouth if we got it. Uh, was one of our goals. We wanted to work hard to get to the top and we wanted to work even harder to try and uh, get a home semi and then obviously a home final to try and get the Hokitika community in behind us. Yes, and um, you've played some attractive footy all season. You've, you've, you've packed me mobile. Um, you've played an expansive gal, Pete Dirakia, 13 tries. We'll see a bit more of that today. Oh, I would like to hope so, Jim. We, uh, yeah, we, uh, we train as if we liked how we like to play and most of our boys like to have have a bit of fun and not get uh, off things don't work, not get too carried away, throw the ball around, have a bit of fun and see how it goes. Terry, um, how have you had the boys prepared this uh, for this game today? There's a bit of history here involved with the first game at Hokitika and of course um, in your club's history uh, you haven't lifted the tail of a wall's end. Has that been a big focus for you guys this week? Yeah, there's been a bit of focus about that. We can't really get too carried away with that, um, you know, mentally. But uh, yeah, that's always on the back of our mind. It would be uh, obviously, um, you know, great thing for us to finally get this uh, this uh, shield that we've been uh, after for obviously 34 years. Um, we've put ourselves in a great position to do that. So um, yeah, we all boys, we trained really well this week. The boys have been pretty focused, and uh, we're here to play. Yeah, a lot to play for for Grey Valley, isn't there? 14-0, they beat Blaketown in their semi-final. Kiwi beat Marist by 29 points to 19. Now, both of these teams, Karma, have uh, played twice this season, played each other twice, they've split their, those games, so Kiwi won one, Grey Valley won the other. This is going to be a 50-50 game, this one. Oh, I absolutely, I know both coaches and supporters will say it's just another game of rugby, but it's not, it's actually more than that. It's a final, it's huge, I mean, Grey Valley... Heard Terry there talking about. I've never won it in their sort of 34 year history. They've been in one final before, but gee, this is this is huge for them. So Kiwi in the blue and Grey Valley in the black. And a great crowd in a Casquare Hokitika Kiwi choosing to play the final. Here you can see uh, how many people have come down to Casquare today. That's been beautifully taken by Jason Wright, the fullback for Grey Valley. And something's building here for the visitors. Well, they've started well, haven't they? I've talked about nerves. And it's more than just another game of rugby, but it does look like that to the Great Valley Troops. They are so excited. Mike Brune, and now Kiwi have possession, but they're coming back for a penalty. Yep. <laughs> Playing away from home, and I can understand why Kiwi, who are the top qualifiers, chose to play at home. When you're on the road, Great Valley, they wanted those points first. They wanted to try and silence this wonderful crowd. It is great, it is intense. But it's fun. It feels so good. And a good number of spectators or supporters of from uh, Ikamatua have come down to support their team too. Getting close to the line here, Grey Valley. Remember, they've never won the West Coast Club Final. No, they're doing it well, Glenn. They really are. They're playing field position early on, so they're taking penalties out of the equation, making Kiwi attack from depth. In fact, Kiwi's hardly had the ball. This is Jason Wright again, the fullback. Another penalty coming up. You can see the referee is playing advantage to Grey Valley. Nick Makia. 
And that player's been shoved into touch, so they're going to come back for the penalty. I'll tell you what, taking penalties and getting these penalties with Tim Priest, the 10, the skipper, top point scorer, been fantastic for the coast, been wonderful for Great Valley over the years. And that is just bread and butter. That is another one. Nine points to nil it is. What's this pitch? whole stack of West Coast players on both sides, so the West Coast coaches for the Heartland Championship will be looking at this game as another trial to see who they can settle down, and look at this forward play here, Carlo. Well, look at the structure, the ball's at the back, so really hard, in fact, here we can't get to it, and that's over, that's your first try. Going to be a try, and let's have a look and see who's coming, looks like a big fella, Peter Nichols is up for the try. Gee, he controlled that, <laughs> but look at the depth. Okay, really good line out, the depth of the ball comes to the back really quickly, so Kiwi just cannot get their hands on it. We saw Peter Nichols here, Jersey 17, he's got the ball in his hand now. He's just steering the ship, and then flops over, in fact he drives over. That's a fantastic try. Well, these are, uh, these are vital points. Kiwi, the home team, and top qualifier you mentioned, Carmen, they're under pressure, big pressure now. Well, they're chasing the game, they're only in the first half. Look, they have to try to attack or do something and we're right inside their 22. The referee's playing another advantage to Grey Valley. More points perhaps coming. Want to free this ball, Kiwi trying hard to disrupt it. Well, I know Kiwi into this game too. They're desperate to win this final, but at the moment it just feels like Grey Valley, even that dude is actually turning the goal their way. They just they want it so desperately. Well, this is good refereeing too. The advantage is still uh, going. That's a nice kick from Priest. Oh, is that a try out right on the uh, juncture of the ground of the post? No. They're coming back to the penalty. Another near thing there for Kiwi. Gee, I'd like to have another look at that. Jason Wright believes it is a try because the Priest grubber kick actually hit the upright, which is fantastic. Jason Wright then came and slid down, and I thought he scored it up against the uprights. It didn't. Priest gets another three. We've got 19 nil after 40 minutes. Big, big job ahead of Kiwi now to come back into this game. Earlier on in the season, Grey Valley beat them 16-10, and then Kiwi, earlier on in the year, just after Anzac Day, won 39-21 against Grey Valley, and they are going to need a miracle to come back into this game. Happy days, though, for uh, Grey Valley. Blair Murphy has taken the field. He's out there now. We see him jersey three. He's got the tape around the head. <laughs> He's a veteran. He'll control things. So Kiwi have got to do something special to come back into this game, and here's something looming. Oh, that's a great bust by their fullback. That's Tofere. Can he find support? He has offloaded in the tackle nicely. So a good bust into the 22 they go now of Grey Valley. Grey Valley smartly slowing it down, and it's going to be a penalty. There's numbers out here to the left if they can get their ball. They need to get it. They need to move it. Gee, this is a willing encounter, isn't it? Kiwi need tries and lots of them to come back into this game. Out it comes. Whoops, that's a wobbly old pass. Is that being knocked forward? No, it's play on and referees awarded a penalty to Kiwi for Grey Valley being offside. Yeah, knock back 10. The weather numbers out there. Grey Valley appreciated. They were short on the left-hand side. Boy, he's oh, he's strong. Yeah, they get it. Winter. Grey Valley and the, the uh, Kiwi forwards just throwing themselves into this game. Now it's David Oates. David Oates getting very close. I think that's a try. I think it's that man Winter. Logan Winter, Jersey 18. <laughs> he's happy that he's got his team somewhat back into the game. Well, he started things with that quick penalty, just running so strong, so straight. Good to see. Good work rate gets himself back on his feet, which is good. Back into play. The pick and go. Jersey 18, up and over, right by the sticks. This will be an easy conversion. Yeah, they are back into this game. Great to see both of these teams just giving it absolutely everything. Oh, the crowd are playing their part too. Here's this uh, Logan Winter again. Gee, he's made an impact since he's come on. But the crowd are right there, aren't they? You can feel them. Free kick awarded to Grey Valley. Remember Grey Valley? They've been going since 1981. They dropped out of the competition in 2001 due to playing or lack of playing numbers. Well, this is a good burst from one of the Kiwi players. That was the left winger, Peter T. Roko. And now it goes to back to Grey Valley. This is right again. One of the standout players. Taken down in the tackle is Sammy Jr. Love the way when Grey Valley get on attack. They offload in the tackle. 
really quick turnover of the ruck ball. All players involved. Well, this is not good for Kiwi with uh, Grey Valley in excellent field position to perhaps uh, lock in another try. Space on the left-hand side and going in for the try. Mike Broom. And that should wrap it up for Grey Valley, you'd think. Gee, look, they know how important it is, aren't they? Players are coming from all around. Congratulate the try scorer. It was the best. And then just a quick recycling of the ball. Wright's played really well. Offloading once again. We have a quick offload from Sammy Jr. right there. Centre's been actively involved. Never they do. Then Verway, big Andrew Verway. He's been great lining up time. Really mobile as a lock forward. Murphy, I told you he'd make an impact that he did. <laughs> At scrum half, and then the hands are aloft. Celebrations are starting. Grey Valley, is this your day? Is this your moment? And now Tim Priest, the leading uh, point scorer in West Coast Club Rugby this season. Can he put the icing on the cake? He can. 26 points to 7. There it is, folks. Grey Valley have won the West Coast Club Rugby Championship for the first time in their history club since 1981 now they're champions well the game over here at Cass Square and Hugger Ticker the Tullivar Walls End Trophy for the first time is going up the Grey Valley with me the Grey Valley captain um, Timmy Priest well boys have made history here today mate and you've got to be proud of the side today oh look Jimmy they they played well we've been training all year hard and you know we picked at the right time and you know couldn't be much more proud of the boys um, you know we brought it all out here today and we'll leave it here yeah, well, the supporters you brought with you too made a, made a huge impact. You must have heard them out there, but um, you denied them the ball in the first half, and I think that 19 0 at half time, the, you were on the road by then, I felt. Yeah, we knew we needed points in the first half, and we knew in the second half they'd split it. So we just had to back our D, and you know, Jimmy, we got there. History's been made, and we'll take that trophy up to the valley, and we have a bloody good night. <laughs> Congratulations to Grey 